and loader everyone. I may be done with the Battlefleet Gothic campaign, but I am not done with the game just yet. Oh no. We are going to be diving into multiplayer there. We're going to be doing a series of matches showcasing all the different races there, especially since the Space Marines are due to be released within the next few days. What better way than to start with the Chaos Forces? I almost called them Chaos Marines. Technically, it's probably true if you look at the captains there, but considering I am so fluid with the Imperial Navy during my campaign run, I'm going to give these other fleets a try. And while I am the least enthusiastic to play the Chaos Forces due to their long-range centric style, I might as well start with them just because it's going to be gr it's going to be delicious to destroy some Space Marines there as they start leveling up. So we are going to dive into that and have some fun with it. But the kind of fleets I have to choose from are pretty limited there, at least for starting ones. It's either more range or more range with fighters, basically. But nonetheless, they have quite an impressive amount of range. Hell, even these lance batteries have like the max 1200 yards or units, I guess they call them, 12,000 units. So, just to get a little bit of sense of diversity, I'm going to go with two Hellbringers and a single Mark II, which I will probably complement with an additional Mark II when I get the fourth uh, light cruiser slot. So that way they can complement a little bit of bigger fleets there, rather than going entirely for light cruisers. At least that's the hope. Have these Hellbringers and Mark II's more to, com to kind of like support the bigger ships when I get that point. Although I've only played multiplayer for like a day as of this recording so I don't really have a good sense of what the multiplayer is going to be like. I only played a handful as the Imperial Navy because I was so fluid with them. And to just have some fun with it and get actually used to the idea. And of course, I haven't even described what I'm doing here because the fact is I already did a recording that failed to actually record, so. The plan here, since they're so long-range independent, is to focus entirely, at least on their skill slot, to actually address that issue I have with detection. At least that's the hope, uh, idea. And provide the nebula they are not near gas clouds and I try to avoid engaging them at gas clouds, I should be able to keep firing at them until they burn their orders on like a silent running technique. And then I can slowly chip down the target and hopefully everything goes well. Chaos is not meant for like the short term get up in their face type of fight. They're in for the long haul. They're in for severe like harassment techniques basically. They whittle them down, they break them down, and then when it seems likely they go in close for the boarding attempts to kind of like the killing blow as it were. Because really they don't have any other close range weaponry. And we already got a match, wow. I guess 1v1 cues are really quick. Although, I am a bit worried I might get my ass beat there fighting a higher level fleet. We shall see though. And we're immediately fighting Eldar 262, so... This is going to be interesting. They do not have shields, but I know that the lances are not going to be very efficient. I think it's safe to say. Ooh, and this is a very specific amount of points, I gotta say, for some reason. So, that's interesting. I'm not even going to have... If I were to drop this, could I get a cruiser? I could. A bit questionable, considering the... What is it? Oh, they don't even have shields, so what I'm going to do instead is have these on here. Have the Iconoclast for extra fire to kind of hopefully get breaks through the hollow field gradually. Although fighters technically could be better. I'm not well first to fight Eldar, as made apparent by my mission that I haven't even played that much multiplayer. So, this is going to be interesting. So what does the map look out? Lots of asteroid fields, little tiny asteroid fields, and conveniently one right in the middle here, which I do not want to spawn teleport onto. And they have two ships there, so I'm going to guess two cruisers. So they can bur they can sprint up to me in a hurry there, but I can detect them in a nice sense. So what I'm going to do is restrict his mobility a tiny bit by deploying near these asteroid fields. I don't plan on going near them, 
but at the very least, he'll have to dance around him there. It might restrict his mobility a little bit. Rather than staying, I do not want him near those nebula clouds because as soon as I detect them, he can just go back into them to kind of like hide himself. And let's see, that's the Ordnance Bane, that's the Lance Fighter, is it? Yeah. Lances, unfortunately, are not going to be very effective unless I do boarding attempt ships that kind of potentially break the generators and cripple their hollow fields. That's the only thing I can think of that might make this useful. Now, what am I likely to face with two ships as either a battle cruiser, battleship, with a frigate maybe? Well actually you wouldn't have the points for a battleship and a frigate I think. I don't know what the points are for a Foy Stalker but from what I understand Foy Stalkers are really damn popular. So, I'm not expecting much here. It looks like this Eldar is just waiting for me to make a move, so... Just show us something to kill. I am not... I am fine with that. I'm just gonna go and reposition a little bit. Because he wants to bait me into it, and of course this means it's gonna be a little bit of a drawn-out fight. Because he's high up in the gas cloud or silent running. It's unlikely he's using silent running though, I want to say. Very unlikely. But I have range. I don't need to do anything. I just need to be able to get free shots in. That's what it all is. Because he's made it apparent. He's not going anywhere. So I can force him out of hiding easily enough with these lances. I just gotta position myself appropriately. Yep, because I know he's in there, so I got probes to help cancel that. I re I actually have probes that are effective at dealing with this. The real question is how much is it going to cost? Ooh! That immediately negates his uh, gas cloud of bonus, so I have a strategy. I have a strategy, I'm not that worried. The question is, is what's my tactics? Because I have no clue what he's engaging as. That's the problem. Because he's going to try and detect me. Because if those are Solaris's, which I'm assuming one of them is probably a Solaris or a Battlecruiser, which means he's very fighter centric. I want to assume, but I'm not seeing any fighters at all there to kind of suggest he went that route. And I can immediately detect that and potentially shoot it, but it's. With the Hall of Fields, it's not going to be worth it, but any damage is going to be great a start for me. me. And this Iconoclast is to punish him for trying to get too close Ready, or getting it too aggressive. Because I can bomb it. Your orders. I can detect it right now if I so wish. So I can shoot it freely. Got some damage, I'm not worried. One's a Solaris, so I know this. And I have a neural one that's going to be able to shoot freely there once I detect that entire nebula cloud. It's going to be fun. Now the question is, I need to make sure I'm close enough. Oh, we're getting some kind of latency here I'm noticing too. And I want to get that inside the Nebula Cloud, ideally. Ready eternally. And I am getting damage. He is defending. So if you want to fight me, fine. And I can silent run if I feel like I need to. And he is... Well, for some reason, technical cogitators aren't doing anything, so... I don't know what to make of this. Ready eternally. I want to detect that thing. I know Solaris. Command me. So, we got ships here. Blocking weapons. I don't know what's most efficient, but this is going to be my priority. For the dark gods. We're going to go after this thing. And of course, Dex already destroyed, so he got a lucky hit there. 
try and damage this thing. I'm not too concerned because I'm getting broadside damage on both ends, so this works out well for me. Okay, now I can turn, fire more missiles there. I'm not too worried. The question is, how do I get the best value out of those fighters? Because it's basically one versus two here. So, let's see, game bombs here. Okay, this works out well. I engage this thing and force him to boost into me. There, that was a massive plus. Well, that worked out well in a hurry, didn't it? Bait and switch as far as that strategy is concerned. Took some damage, but hey. Can, I don't have a deck, so I can't use that probe anymore, but apparently you're still active. Wow, I didn't realize I lasted that long. Wow, 180 seconds. I was not expecting that. Almost the entire duration, especially, they're especially useful against Eldar for obvious reasons, because they don't have shields to kind of count, prevent me from planting them on top. A 50% chance to kind of just get on there and cripple, cripple something. Although, it should, will be only damaged, I think. And I'm going to take some damage here, but since he wastes his bombers, I'm not too much at risk. Yeah, fighters are coming after me, but there's only like a handful of them, so... I think my fighters can fight them off, I think. I'm hopeful my fighters can. We're going to lock on to increase accuracy, because the missile pods are actually... Due to sheer numbers, they can break through and do gradual damage to that thing. I think is what the strategy is here. And I can repair most of this damage easily enough, but I have no boosters to kind of get in close. So he's going to be pincered. I gotta get ready to pounce on him. And I was not watching if my bombers managed to get any damage in. So I'm almost con convinced that this frigate alone could kill that Solaris now if he chooses to, but... I'm almost certain he's going to run. Oops. And I was not paying attention my lances can actually reach. He's warping out, isn't he? Nope. Apparently warping out is not an option. Now, let's bait him over to the cruiser. Just show us something to kill. And then bomb. Do Actually, let me just board this thing. For the dark gods. I just find it interesting. Why is uh, one squad coming after me and another isn't? Not that that's big a deal, but it's on fire, and he's just going to let me ram him. Okay, I'm fine with that. Not necessarily a chaos tactic, is it, to could just go and ram the, the enemy, but it rapidly worked for me there. Hmm, I had the beacons to basically counter any strategy he had about hiding the mist there, but... Once that got close, he decided to not stay there. Ooh, and look at that renown. One, one, one. Are you sure that's one or a three? Are you got an amazing amount of renown or a horrible amount? I'll let you decide. And we got two levels up here. So this is a very promising start for me. Although, to be honest, I did not even look at what level those cruisers were. So I'm left wondering if they're actually very effective and... This one is f focused on my fighters, so I think reducing the cooldown is ideal there. And what about lances? I honestly don't know. 1% chance to crit, no. and decent chance to crit here with long loading time. I honestly don't know what's the most effective here for this. Because I don't know if Master Gunner is going to be justified in long-term fights, but uh, hey, I guess a lot of critical hits is possible if I go all out on it. Because these are, again, are more long drawn-out fights there, rather than burst, massive burst potential like torpedoes from the Imperial Navy or massive pulsar spam, I guess, for Eldar would be my assumption, so maybe I can use that for more whittling down potential. So that leaves what I want for the upgrade here. Because this only affects lances, and I think my main source of damage is probably my macromatters. Is 9 damage each. They do 3 attacks, so... 
That's a, basically the same rate of fire, so that sounds more damage than these things here. If you ask me. So I don't think I want to put points into the lances unless... Well, they have extreme range, so I can upgrade to be 1200 unit range distance. Oh, never mind, they already got 1200 units, so it's the macro batteries if I want to upgrade the range. Which is a possibility too, but I'm more content to enhance the accuracy maybe. Okay, it's already, it only accounts for 9,000 range, so let's focus on the range first. Because I think the main strength of Chaos is to avoid getting hit entirely, so... My focus probably is its mobility and firepower. Hmm, come to think of it. Yeah, Mission Disappears sounds a lot of fun if you ask me. Being able to dodge torpedoes and remain hidden. I don't know how effective it's going to be, it might, it might honestly be a mistake. But this thing, without that, is going to focus on its fighters. And then we'll go for one more and see how this goes. Wow, an amazingly fast queue for these 1v1s. I'm worried. I don't know why there's so many low-leveled admirals. Unless they're tired of fighting battleships. That's the only thing I could think of. This is another cruiser clash, 250 points, and we're fighting... It was... I don't know if this was the same Eldar ship or not, but... Nonetheless, I think the same flea is what I want. Same concept. Because I want something to continue whittling down, and... Wow, I have even less points here, so... This is going to be interesting. They're going to have two Solaruses, so... I want raw firepower, and let's see, what kind of turrets do I have? Nine. This is going to be interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. What's my best chance of breaching through? That has torpedoes. Let's see, how many can I get? I can get two infidels and isoclad, but I think I'd rather raw numbers and focus fire that way. Let's see. There we go. That gives me the most value. Very questionable setup. But I already know I'm fighting, your, fighting two cruisers. That's just enough points for Eldar to have two cruisers and... Because they're what, around 110 points, so they might not be able to get a frigate. If I can control this well and take advantage of all those missiles, Parasim, that could be useful. Because they're all pra weaponry base. I only have one beacon is the big problem to kind of detect them. So that's my big risk. Okay, match starts immediately there. Okay, looks like you've got one cruiser of some kind and two uh, frigates. So maybe that's not as bad. I just don't know what kind of ships he has. Again, I only got a single beacon, so I do not want to waste it. I need to use my frigates to spot. And my icon Icono Icono class destroyer is the most likely one to spot them. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And they all boost forward. And I'm out in the open there where I don't can't they can't benefit from the nebula class, so generally that means I don't have to worry about gas clouds. And they're all coming towards me too, so that could be a concern. We shall see, they're coming right at me. For the dark gods. Ready eternally. That's a bomb. Okay, that's gonna do some damage to me, but it's not gonna break through the shields. Oh, I dodge it completely. That works Just out well. So let's on, shoot man. some torpedoes and kind of waste those fighters, shall we? Now, let's detect these things and start fighting them. The problem is, let's see, that was a Solar, so yeah, I got my own fighters to deal with that. The problem, though, yeah, Pulsar set up, so it shouldn't be too bad if I can get focus fire these frigates. These are my focus fire. Ram this thing to hell. For the 
because they want to ram me, they're not going to get it. Oh boy. It helps if I control these things better though. Command me. If anything, they want to ram me, so... I kind of want to oblige them, if I'm perfectly honest. So, these frigates are a focus. Make them the priority, I don't care about the, the other ones. And now I could torpedo. And that's not going to hit, unfortunately. For the dark gods. Force him moving. Yeah, he's in an asteroid field now, so... I'm in good shape here. Just got to spread out the damage. This is not going to go well for him. I just got to make sure I don't go in the asteroid field myself. Now, my focus is these things here. Just show us something to kill. There's my focus. Try and kill these things. There, that's one frigate down. Took a bit of damage, but worthwhile, quite frankly. Quite frankly, a worthwhile trade. And this one is about to have his torpedoes up. It's going to be hard to hit him with torpedoes, but what it does is keep him moving, keep him micromanaging, so it makes it that much more difficult for him to adjust accordingly. Like that, see? He was spamming that button, he took a crap ton of damage as a result. I don't think that was the most sam- It definitely was just a smart strategy, but still. Now everything, gauge it. This is gonna hurt. Well, both his frigates gone. Perfect consolation prize as far as I'm concerned. Brace for impact. Minimize the damage because these things are what's gonna win it for me. Because he can outmaneuver my regular my cruiser as much as he wants, especially if he can get hit in. I should have not just hold hold burn retros. I I boosted the range of that bomb. That's a big deal. I got the range to hit regardless. Now boost it. There, nice hit there. Still hitting it there, so I don't know what to make of that. Now torpedoes, poor bugger. He's gonna boost out. Yep. He's gonna boost that. I wasn't. I kind of predicted that. I'm in good shape though, but this one needs to heal up, or at least get some cover. Bait him to come after me, basically, if he wants this kill. I don't think he's going for it. Now, force him into the Solaris. There. Now, there. Flawless victory. Well, not really flawless. I did lose a frigate, but hey. It worked out well. I was kind of expecting two cruisers, to be honest, but he couldn't handle the micromanagement, so I outmaneuvered him. Especially with those high energy turns that catch him off guard with that aggressive play. As it stands, though, it was only two Eldar missions. I did get a level up all my light cruisers, though, so that's a plus. And if possible, I can get myself a regular cruiser to kind of complement this for next, uh, Next series of matches, so this is going to go with the exact same route as I did with my first Hellbringer. Upgrade, make my fighters stronger. 300 renown, easily upgrade this cruiser. And I will think about what kind of cruiser I want to complement this force.